I was reflecting on this today, the risk you took when you took on the iconic role of Spock. There's a very vocal, serious community of Star Trek fans, and if you don't nail it, which, by the way, you did, you. they'd have torn you limb from limb. Were you scared of, of taking on the role of Spock? They're not fooling around, these people. Yeah. There's no denying it. Maybe some of them are here. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, they've been incredibly supportive for the whole, you know, it's like five years ago that we made that movie, and now we're getting ready to get to uh, in front of the other one, the second one. So, you know, I think they're all right. I think they're going along with us. They are. I mean, uh, you, you did a stunning job, but I would have to think just stepping into the shoes or the boots, if you will, of Leonard, Nimo uh, Leonard Nimoy, yeah. uh, you know, who so created the role and defined it so much, that's got to be next to impossible. He's such a great guy, though, and immediately he embraced me and supported me. Oh, and so you got to work yeah, with him. Totally. I know he was in the movie, but and he really helped you? We've become very, very good friends, actually. And he was uh, always there, always available, and... Uh, you know, an incredible part of the process for me, so I feel really lucky for him yeah. in my life now, even even though we're not working together on this next one. Well, this is interesting, because uh, not too long ago, J.J. Abrams, the director of the, of the franchise, came on the show and he showed three frames. Don't even get me started on this guy, you know what I mean? I think she, <laughs> what, he comes here, he brings, so I decided actually. He showed three frames yeah, of the new Star I Trek movie. It. People lost their minds. Right. It was three frames of you, literally three frames. It was over like that, totally. but it exploded on the net. People went crazy. I want to tell you something. I, I have a lot of respect for you and your audience and I wanted to bring something for you guys today that was more than that, you know. Uh, and, <laughs> I didn't tell JJ, I didn't tell Paramount, so we can deal, you have a legal department, right? We have, we'll do yep, it after. trust me, these days I have a legal department, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to show everybody something, so I think. So uh, what, you, you brought something more than I three did. frames long? Yeah, I thought that was ridiculous. This is the first the time, up, you know, this is the first like, time people are gonna see this. It is, and, and we're putting nine minutes of the movie in front of the IMAX version of The Hobbit starting December 14th. So I thought, why wait? You know, I'm gonna just come out of the gate. You guys wanna see this? This is absolutely incredible. All right, this is, I guess, a clip? Yeah. This is a more extended, uh, certainly longer than three and frames. And it's certainly clip. gonna give you an idea of what is happening in this film and yeah. what this film, what's really driving the movie forward in terms of the characters and their uh, obstacles. Amazing, all right, yeah. let's take a look at this clip uh, from the upcoming Star Trek Into the Darkness. Right. Jim, we've got to get back to the ship. There are aliens and they will explode. Wow. It's riveting stuff, this next movie. Most, most guests, when they show a clip, they don't wander away. I know. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, it's funny. I, 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 I did have a, the impression, like a Snuggie. I'm under the impression that I think Andy's in that movie, too. Oh, that's Let's right. Let's take I a look. I have a small cameo. <laughs> I don't rate a green screen? <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Come on over, Andy. It's fine. 